salmon fishing as much as I do, then you must have at least heard about mooching reels. My personal experience with mooching reels is primarily for use in downrigger fishing. The huge drag allows for an incredibly smooth descent on the downrigger, with none of the jerkiness you get from the more conventional reels. The large arbor means a ton of line capacity, so the chances of getting spooled on that big king are next to none. I really like the simplicity of the reel, and using your palm as a drag on the arbor to slow that big run makes me feel a little bit more connected to the fish and the experience. A strong word of caution about grabbing for those knobs when a fish is running. They're called knuckle busters for a reason. If the fish is pulling hard, get your reeling hand clear of the handles. Then you have the option of palming the arbor to apply additional drag. If you get those knuckles near the spinning handles, they will get wrapped. It only takes a couple of times to learn, but habits can die hard for some. Today we're going to be doing a little maintenance on one of my first mooching reels, the Shimano Moocher Plus 2000 GT. This is the second generation version of these reels from Shimano. Here are the specifications. This particular reel has been in my arsenal since about 2008. I'm embarrassed to say that besides rinsing and line changes, this reel has seen zero maintenance. Even with extreme lack of care, the reel has endured and continues to function well. Let's see if we can make it even better. This will be my first time serving this particular model, so bear with me as we go through this together. Let's jump in. You know, for a solid decade and lots of fish caught, this reel doesn't appear too worse for wear. We'll start by removing the drag knob counterclockwise. Then the arbor should just slide right off the pin. Huh, notice how clean everything appears. It's all stainless and brass construction, which means no corrosion issues. Look how tight this clicker gear is. All right, let's take this case apart. First we start with the drag washer. It's a bit flat, but it's still pliable. Next is the clicker gear. It could use some cleaning, but it's still functional. After that, there's a nylon washer and an anti-reverse gear, which is stainless. There isn't a ton of lubricant in the case, and what is here is pretty dirty. Let's check out the arbor side. First we're going to need to remove the four screws holding the dust cap on. Wow, notice the caked on old grease. It's like old caulking. Next is the first flat washer. Yep, more caked on grease. When you do this, try to keep your parts in order so it's easier to rebuild the reel when you're done. Take a look at the second drag washer. Completely worn flat and brittle from the lack of lubrication and all the heat. Notice how easily it snaps. Wow, now that we have the parts all out, let's clean it all up and reassemble this thing. I'm not going to bore you with the step-by-step -step cleaning each individual piece. Let's just say that I used some carburetor choke cleaner and a rag and cleaned all the parts up. Here we go. 
So let's get to reassembling. I removed a piece of the brass piece off the spindle. And um, so now all that's left is the stainless pin. I'm going to add uh, some of that real grease to the stainless pin so that it can lubricate the, uh, the brass spindle as it goes around the pin. Not really heavy. I just put, you know, a light coat on it. Uh, then there's a, a flat washer that goes on the bottom of the brass spindle. Okay, and then comes the brass spindle. I mean, all of a sudden you can you can totally feel the difference in uh, in how free the parts move compared to that caked on grease. There is another washer that goes on the top of the pin and also a little retainer clip that slides in a little C-clip. Once that's snapped into place, then we can start putting all the uh, washers on. We'll put a little bit of grease on the spindle. And a little bit of grease on the on the springs and other hardware inside the reel. Let's get that anti-reverse um, washer in there. That little pin uh, spring come loose, so we'll get that back on. Next, I'm confused, but then I realize, oh wait, I have to put the, nope, nope. Ah, uh, there it is. The nylon washer goes in. This is my first time, folks, so bear with me. After the clicker gear, then we get our new drags on. As you can read, I bought these from Smooth Drag online. These are Carbon Tax washers. Also, the grease that I bought is from them as well. It's called uh, Carl's Universal Real Star Drag Grease. I thought I'd add this information on there. So just like the instruction said, take some of the grease, add it to the washer. Not too heavy, just make sure that you soak it in the washer pretty good. It was amazing how much grease these things actually soaked up. So with that, the case side is done, ready to go. And we'll move over to the arbor. There's my second drag washer. This is the one that uh, when we first pulled it apart was really, really brittle. So I think that this washer sees quite a bit of action. Lubricated it up the same way. Added just a little bit more lubricant on my flat washer. And then we'll reassemble. Put the other flat washer on top of that. Then the dust cap. Four screws. Now that the arbor is completely reassembled, then we can slide it back over the pen.
Replace the drag knob. And last but not least, we need to spool it up with our favorite pound test of line that we like to run. I prefer 30 pound, but most of the guys I know run 20 on theirs. This reel is ready to rock and roll. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you guys found this informative. Now let's get out on the water and catch some fish.